Bibles, turn with me to John, the 12th chapter. Going to read verses 1 through 9. John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone, against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Much people of Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. This is not a Mother's Day sermon. That may be what you have been expecting, but I think that this message in this scripture reading honors all women, whether they are mothers or whether they're not or whether they're going to be mothers. This scripture honors all women. And I am not one who discriminates. I have preached and do preach Mother's Day sermons from time to time. But I like to preach when I'm praising or saying something good about women or men or whatever the case, boys or girls. I like to include them all because every one of you ladies, I feel, are worthy of the praise not only of the Lord, but of we men who are here. And I want you to know for myself that I love each one of you very deeply for your service in the Lord's work. If you want something done in church today, usually you can tell a woman about it or a few of the women, and they'll get the rest of the women together and something will get done. Now, it's not always so with men. We tend to put things off just as long as we possibly can. Uh, maybe it's because we have uh, a fishing day all laid out or something like that. But I've always found that any time that I ask any of the ladies of the church to do something, they were there to do it and gladly did they that service for the Lord. We have a lady uh, brought to our view here in this portion of Scripture. And by the way, let me say this. If it weren't for uh, women, some of our churches just wouldn't have a church. There's so few men today that are uh, in the service of the Lord that we just wouldn't have much of a church. If it wasn't for the women, thank God for the ladies of the churches of the BMA of America. Now this lady that we have brought to our attention has performed a very special service for the Lord. And I believe that women of the Bible, all through the Word of God, the Old Testament and the New Testament, Women in the Word of God have been highly praised for their service to the Lord. But like all other servants of the Lord, 
as she performed her service, she was faced with some opposition. Now that's nothing new in the work of the Lord, is facing opposition, not just from without, but often within the church. Of course, that ought not to be so, but it is a fact nevertheless. But many times when you try to do something for the Lord, you're going to face some kind of an opposition, and it may be opposition in the name of the Lord, but it will be opposition most of the time, just the type that Mary faced here in this portion of Scripture. I want you to know three things about this woman's service for the Lord. And as we go through this, let us try to put ourselves, lady, in her shoes for a moment and maybe experience her feelings as she performed this service for the Lord and ran into all kinds of opposition. First of all, I want you to note her unselfish sacrifice here that she made. Number two, her unjust critics. Someone's always going to say something about what you do. And then third, her uncommon service commended by the Lord. Jesus is always ready and willing and does commend his servants for service rendered in his name and for his cause. He commended this lady, highly commended her. Let us note her unselfish sacrifice here now. And note, first of all, the character of her sacrifice. Verse 3 tells us a little about the character of the sacrifice that she made. She comes and the Bible tells us that she brings a pound of ointment of spike, Lord, very costly. Very costly. I don't know how much money Mary and Martha and Lazarus had. It makes no difference. I know what we're told about one lady in the Bible who put two mites in the offering plate and Jesus standing next to the treasury and beholding how people cast their money into the treasury said that this widow had given more than all the rich people because she gave everything that she had. Now, you tell me that women don't sacrifice to serve the Lord? Jesus said they did, and he observes everything that they do. This was a costly sacrifice to Mary. I find that when it comes to supporting the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ, many, many women along with many, many men are ready to give of their best to the master. That's just what she did here. We're told in Matthew 16, 24, Jesus tries to give us a hint of how costly it may be to serve him. You know, that scares the fire out of some people. They just uh, won't try to do anything because they're afraid of the cost. In Matthew 24, 16, Jesus said, And if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I see ladies who deny themselves certain things in order to serve the Lord. We have some women in this church who are willing to give of their time. They're willing to give of their tithes. They're willing to give above their tithe and give an offering unto the Lord. I have no doubt but what Mary brought this above all that she'd already given to the Lord, even though it was a very costly thing. 300 pence is what 
Judas said it should have been sold for her. That's $132 in our money. $132 back then was probably kind of like $132,000 now with the rate of inflation and all. So she brought a very costly offering, made a very costly sacrifice unto the Lord here. And the second characteristic about this sacrifice is that she gave it humbly and cheerfully. Listen to verse 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spike, Lord, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. Now that's an act of humility. She brought this sacrifice humbly, and she gave it cheerfully unto the Lord. Who today would think of anointing someone's feet and wiping their feet with their hair. I dare say none of us. Of course, I don't have enough hair left to wipe anybody's feet. But some people have. Look at Joyce there. What a head of hair. But Mary anointed the feet of the Lord Jesus and wiped his feet with the hair showing her humility and how humble she felt being in the presence of the Son of God. Brought her to a hum an humble act in cheerfully giving this great sacrifice to the Lord Jesus. I carry you to 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, and let you hear what the Apostle Paul says about a cheerful giver. He says, Everyone, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. No. Not grudgingly, or giving against your will, but do it cheerfully. And that's what she did. And Paul says God loves a cheerful giver. I used to pastor a church. There was one man in the church, well, two or three, but one especially. Man, he was a thorn in my side. Everything that the church wanted to do progressively, he opposed it. He was a very wealthy individual. Every Sunday morning, he put 50 cents in the offering plate. And he did that grudgingly. The only reason he did it was because he was ashamed not to do it. And before he turned that half a dollar piece loose, he squeezed it so hard till he made the almost the eagle scream. What little he gave, he gave it grudgingly. And we're told here in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 that let every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly now, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, some people are opposed to tithing. And I had a man tell me one time, he said, uh, I'm opposed to tithing because the Bible says, as a man purposes in his heart, so let him give. I came back with this answer, and I believe it with all my heart. I believe that a man ought to purpose in his heart to give. But I believe he ought to purpose to give what God says is his. And that is the time. And not the last tenth or the second tenth, but God says the first tenth is mine. So let a man purpose in his heart to give, yes, and not grudgingly, nor of necessity, but let him purpose to give what God says belongs to him. 